Hey everybody, this is Mr. A here, and we're going to take a look at the published CIE paper from June 2014. This is from the section from section B and one of the 13 mark essays, which means that it's one that we have to evaluate. So I want to go through it with you, teach you some strategies. I'm going to try to keep it brief, but make sure my points are powerful so you know how to improve when you write your essays. All right, the topic and the prompt for this one is when a government wishes to lower unemployment, its only method of reducing it is by the use of fiscal policies. Do you agree with this opinion? If you see this question, you should be over the moon because if you've been studying CI economics, you know that it is not the only method and you should master, you should have mastered by now monetary and supply side policies. So you should be bursting with joy in your heart because you know how to write this. So I'm going to take you through it and see how this essay has been written. All right, firstly, fiscal policy is the use of government taxation and spending to influence the growth of an economy. Unemployment is a measurement of the utilization, let's make this bigger, of the labor force. Low unemployment is a macroeconomic objective of government. Excellent introduction. Why? They introduce the key concepts and explain them clearly. This is already achieving high level L1. All right, while fiscal policy can lower unemployment, it is not the only policy that is effective in doing so. Interesting. Monetary and supply side policies are also effective at reducing unemployment. All right, so this is just a good directional statement indicating the uh, alternatives and policies to be discussed or the alternative policies to be discussed. So if the government wishes to reduce unemployment, they must increase aggregate demand or aggregate supply. They can achieve this by increasing spending or decreasing taxation, of which both will impact government spending, a component of aggregate demand. So this is a explanation of how the government can reduce unemployment by targeting aggregate demand. So this goes beyond knowledge and explains like how, they, how this thing works, but in analysis we're going to go a little bit deeper. For example, a decrease in the rate of personal income tax increases consumer disposable income and they are more likely to spend everything else equal. They will increase spending on a variety of goods and services, driving up aggregate demand across industries. This is L3 analysis begins. Those firms will increase production and need to employ more people to meet this rising demand. This can be seen in figure one below. As the aggregate demand curve shifts from AD to AD1, there is a concurrent increase in the price level on real GDP. As real GDP rises, unemployment falls. L3 analysis of an increase in aggregate demand as the result of a decrease in personal income tax with correctly labeled and, and, uh, and described diagram. Let's change described to unexplained. Okay, they correctly reference the diagram, so that's good. So this is really strong analysis. <clears throat> From this analysis, it can be determined that in order to reduce unemployment production and therefore real GDP must increase. The government can also achieve this through the central bank and its monetary policy. Monetary policy involves the use of money supply and the interest rate to influence aggregate demand in the economy. L1 definition of monetary policy. A lower interest rate decreases the cost of borrowing and also reduces the cost opportunity cost of holding money. L2 explanation of the method by which uh, monetary policy is effective. Their consumers are more likely to spend as saving is less attractive. They are more likely to borrow with lower borrowing costs. In doing so, they will drive up aggregate demand and a similar shift to aggregate demand from figure one will occur. L3 analysis of how a reduction in the interest rate increases aggregate demand with supporting graph. Thirdly, the government can also use supply side policy to lower unemployment. As opposed to fiscal and monetary policy, these policies focus directly on the level of aggregate supply within an economy. For example, if the government decides to invest more money into primary and secondary education, the workforce is likely to be more skilled and productive. 
All right, here is an L2 X, L1 and L2 definition and explanation of how uh, supply side policies work. In doing so, their output per hour should increase and thus reduce the cost of production for business. Output per hour, you could probably say productivity. And thus reduce the cost of production for businesses. The result will be a rightward shift in long run aggregate supply as seen in figure two below. After the LRAS curve shifts rightward from LRAS to LRAS1, real GDP rises. As real GDP rises, firms have increased production and unemployment has fallen. All right, so this is thorough analysis with supportive diagram of how supply side policy can be used to reduce unemployment. All right, let's continue. So this is pretty good with L1, L2, and L3. To evaluate, the government has several options to lower unemployment, not just fiscal policy. The effectiveness of each policy is based on the sensitivity of the economy to the change in the policy. Fiscal policy generally takes a long time to develop and may not have an immediate effect on the economy. Okay, there's some L4 evaluation uh, of the time lag of fiscal policy. Also before, they wrote a little bit about sensitivity of the public. Uh, therefore, lowering unemployment may be achieved faster by the use of monetary policy. The government can adjust the interest rate quicker than by the use of fiscal policy. However, the effectiveness of monetary policy to reduce unemployment is also limited by the size of the change. A larger change in the interest rate can have a more significant impact on the economy than a smaller change. Here's more L4 evaluation of the use of monetary policy to impact the economy. All right, supply side policy is effective, but investment into education may take many years to bear fruit. It's L4 evaluation of supply side policy. Uh, I would say that the one thing missing here is really going into, actually, no, you do talk a little bit about unemployment, but there should be more of this evaluation in the light of uh, unemployment. So the question for you after seeing me go through this is how would you score it? There's L4, L3, L2, L1. So L1 is going to say that it's got some correct facts, but some irrelevancies, things that don't matter, and errors of theory. I would say that's not a problem. Uh, for limited discussion, below development, no conclusion, I think we've passed L2. Uh, L3, for fair but undeveloped discussion with limited reference to possible alternatives but with a conclusion. All right, now I'm going to leave you here. So what I would suggest you do is pause the video for a second. Think how you would score it between 9 and 13, and then I'll tell you what I gave it. Now my score for this, I would mark this essay in the L4 band, definitely. And what you should know is that markers or examiners will start in the middle of the mark band and then go either way. So I've always been told, start in the middle and then award either lower or go higher if it's stronger than where you think uh, it falls. So generally, I feel this was a strong essay. And so I'm not going to go down from 11. I'm probably going to go upwards from 11. Now, I don't like to give out 13s. That's just me, but I think someone could make the argument for that. I'm going to give this essay a 12 out of 13. Uh, argue, you could probably argue it down to 11 if you want, but I think they've achieved what they need to. So if you're looking for information about how to write a strong essay and how to achieve L1, 2, 3, 4, this is a great example to follow.